very own pastor is Dr. Vincent L. Golden Sr. Amen.
this morning. We want to give you a new heart, Lord God, that you can work on and dwell in, Lord God, like only you can and, and do, oh God. We just thank you and we praise you. And we just ask that you just be with our pastor on this morning as he brings forth the word on this morning. We bind up everything that would try to attack him right now in the name of Jesus. So that you can have your way in him and through him. In Jesus' name, we pray and ask it all. Amen and amen.
soul loves Jesus. Hallelujah. The soul loves Jesus this morning. God bless his name. Hallelujah. So we thank God because our soul loves Jesus. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. He's worthy of all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. Somebody said, I have not been for the Lord who is on my side. If it had not been for the Lord who watched over me last night, if it had not been for the Lord who woke me up this morning, if it had not been for the Lord who will keep my eyes stay on If it had not been for the Lord who gave me breath in my body, if it had not been for the Lord who gave me legs to walk with, if it had not been for the Lord who gave me a voice to praise his name, Bloom, the grass is turning. It's God's 
concert. Nobody else can do that but God. And that's what I get excited about. Knowing that God does great work. Amen. Can y'all help me welcome our friends, our guests that watch us virtually? Sister Summer, Sister Hale, Brother Hale, Brother Miller, we're glad all of you that are watching us, amen, virtually. We thank God for you, and we know there's others watching us. It's just good that you're able to watch us virtually. Do me one good favor. If you desire, just put something in the chat today. It doesn't have to be a state and address. Just say good morning. If you're out of town, you can get you're greeting us. We would like to have you to put that in the chat. But certainly if you are out of town and you're a guest with us, we'd like to see it in the chat. But just if nothing else, let's just put something in the chat today just to know God is good to you. Because what I do when I get through uh, preaching, I go home and read the chats, Brother Moses, just to see what folks say. Amen. Because sometimes it helps me. And then I see who logged off too, brother. Two moments. Let's hold on the story. Amen. Bless his name. But we just want you to do that. Our guests, our friends, and the watchers virtually. Listen, just a, real, a few quick announcements. Um, uh, I want to again encourage you. Uh, again, I, I was driving by the park yesterday and saw many people at the pavilions and they're gathering and people are coming together and getting outside and doing things together. Brothers and sisters, COVID is still yes, it is. present. Yes, it is. Unity, my family, my friends that are watching that are with us today. Listen, COVID is still here. I want you to be careful uh, uh, out and about. Still wear your mask. Still protect yourself. And the vaccine does not prevent you from getting COVID. Don't get it twisted. Amen. But I want you, uh, certainly, I ask if you desire again to get your COVID shot. Amen. If that's what you if you want to get vaccinated, that's a good thing. I have some great information. If you've been waiting and you're 16 or older on April the 2nd and April the 7th, uh, I have uh, connections. Make sure that before you leave today, see Sister Lolita, give her your name, and I will get the information to the people that will be willing to do that. Starting April the 2nd, if you're 16 or older and desire to get the vaccine, I have some connections that can help you get the vaccine. When you, if you're watching us, amen, uh, please call the church. Uh, now, if you're worried about the vaccine, you pray about it. If you go get it, pray about it. Amen. I just believe we got to let God do what God do. Amen. 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 I, uh, I uh, will be honest with you. I was very skeptical about doing it myself, but uh, I take blood pressure every day. Amen. I don't know what's in that pill. Amen. Amen. I take cholesterol pill every day. I don't know what's in that pill. But somehow I went to the doctor last week and when I got my physical, he said, your cholesterol is the best I've ever seen it, so something must be in the pill. That's his name. That's his name. I'm, just saying, I'm just saying what I'm saying. You do what you do and we pray with you. Amen. I believe that God has put people in places to help us when they can help us. But certainly we need to pray about what we're doing. Listen, I'm excited because today begins our 69th Holy Convocation and Simultaneous Revival. Amen. Sister uh, Holy Convocation and Revival. Listen, I want you to tune in today at 5 o'clock to uh, uh, our kickoff uh, preacher of our convocation, Reverend uh, Bertrand Bailey, and you don't want to go to heaven without Amen. hearing Pastor Bailey Amen. preach. Oh, yeah. Amen. 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 Pastor Bailey is somebody's preacher. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And we thank God for him. Amen. That we'll do our kickoff for today at 5 o'clock. You can log on to uh, Facebook, YouTube, Baptist Pastors Conference. There's many areas out there that you can log on to. We're trying to even stream it to our website. Uh, so you can log on today at 5 o'clock and uh, join um, Revival Choir. It's, it's, we're still doing, it's just virtual. Everything is virtual and side, downsized to what have you, but I want you to do that. Then every day this week, well, I'm sorry, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday at 10.30 in the morning, we have lecturer, uh, uh, Dr. Frank Thomas will share with us a great uh, pastor, preacher, retired preacher that will share every day on a lecture series, and then we'll have a sermon of the day during that time. Certainly on Monday, my good friend and my brother, Dr. Uh, brother uh, Walter Thomas Jr., who's going to do our revival, uh, will be doing the we'll do this, uh, new day speaker on Monday. Please join uh, on if you can. I know that some of y'all can multitask. I know you're working from home, so just put your iPad to the right of the uh, other screen. 
and get some word right because you do it when I'm teaching Bible study, so do it. Anyway, uh, so just, just <laughs> so want you want you to uh, do like do some multitasking on, on this revival to kind of hear. Uh, we need a revival. We need a revival. I want to encourage you to please, ma'am, please, sir, join in uh, this week for our uh, virtual simultaneous revival. And if you have problems getting connected, text me, call me. I will help you uh, to do that. Today at five, today at five is at the is the uh, kickoff at six thirty. We still have Sunday school. We'll be done at the Lord's Day Saint after uh, uh, between that time because it's all virtual. So at six thirty, we still have Sunday school. Log on to our Sunday school, Amen. And we would look forward to having and glad to have you. To join us with our son. So there's a special announcement now from our young adults. So I'm going to ask uh, them to come and share how it's done. Is it virtual? Okay, come on. Share with us a special announcement from our young adults. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning good family. Morning. I am coming to you from the young adult ministry. First of all, we want to thank Dr. Golden for, for putting this group of individuals together. And under the direction of Sister Tierra Lee and Sister Ashley Towns, we are coming to you with a movie night. Amen. Movie night next Saturday. We are showing a movie called The Loving, if you can see it on the screen right now. It's about a biracial couple named Richard and Mildred Loving that fell in love in the 1950s. And they endured all kinds of trials and tribulations. It's a really, really, really good movie. So if you can, log on to Zoom. We will send out the link soon. Uh, log on to Zoom next Saturday night. Grab your popcorn, grab your chips, grab your snacks, and come on to Zoom. You don't even have to have your, your screen on. Just log on to Zoom, and we would love to have you there. It's called Love and you would love this movie. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you. I am so grateful for our young adults. Uh, they are working to keep us active and involved, and I want you to support them. Don't look at them like they're strange and like they're doing something wrong. Uh, they are doing work to keep us engaged and working uh, together to make things happen, and they're going to show a movie that you would not even have to pay for. Christian movie. All the movies you watch at home ain't Christian. Help me, the Holy Ghost. All them TV shows you watch. Is, I met Mary with you. I know I said uh, Housewives of America, whatever that ain't Christian. Amen. Amen. All Shades of Grey, whatever the movie is. Uh, uh, what's that other y'all watch? Uh, uh, anyway. Yeah, yeah, have it, have nots, and all, all that kind of stuff. Tyler Perry movies. And yeah, I don't watch them, but whatever you watch, the news right now, you gotta be kept watching the news. Amen. Come on, talk back to me. Amen. But we want to uh, thank God for our, our young adults who are doing a tremendous job. And I am so grateful for this group uh, who are working to build bridges in the church, etc. And I want you to pray for them and support them as they continue to do things to help us to stay relevant in this 21st century. Amen. Also, let's not forget Tuesday night. We will also have Bible study. Uh, amen. The day session will be that morning. So we'll still have Bible study on Tuesday night. We have another health form on this night. So those of you that might be dealing with uh, concerns of mental uh, issues or going through this COVID and kind of feeling depressed and down in some areas, you know somebody that's doing that, please want them to log in to hear this uh, health professional will share with us some things of what we're facing during these crises. And then finally, let me share with you um, our Resurrection Sunday service, our Easter service, for the first Sunday in April. We have two services. We have one at 9 and one at 11. So we get as many people that want to come can come. And we're not trying to uh, do this. However, we will take a list and kind of find out who's going to show up at the 9 o'clock, who's going to show up at 11 o'clock, so we can make sure that we do have it, spread it out. Um, I just believe that we should be in church on Resurrection Sunday. Resurrection Sunday. Amen. 
Right. I know that we should, you know, we're in church all the at any time, but something about uh, Resurrection Sunday, and I believe that we should uh, try to get together. Plus, God has put this on a day, first Sunday, where we take communion together and all of that. So I just want to make sure that it's available to all uh, that can and do the desire to come. We do social distancing, but we'll have two services, one at 9 a.m. and one at 11 a.m. Amen. 9 to 10 30. 9 to 10 30. Amen. And 9 to 10 30. Now, 11 o'clock, um, you're on your own. <laughs> no, so just come. If you, want, if you want to come to both, amen, just let us know. We'll depend on the amount of people that will be here. We want to make sure that we do that all right. So tell your friends, tell your families, not just for unity, but we want to have service, amen, on, the, on Resurrection Sunday. Hey, listen, God has given me an assignment this morning. Psalm 18. If you go to Psalm 18, after the choir has blessed us, we will come back with the word of God.
glory belongs to you, our God. Hallelujah. Thank you, choir. Amen. Thank you, music ministry. Thank you all for blessing us this morning. Listen, there is a word. If you would go with me to Psalm 18, verse 1, 2, and 3, I will lift before you. When you're there, you should see these words. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength, in whom I will trust. My buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Bless be God. You may rest in the word of God. God, we thank you now for a preaching space. Lord, as I have prepared, I ask you to preach. Holy Spirit, use me to glorify you. Let this word be most convincing and convicting. Let it be life-changing. The Lord, we can say that we heard from the Lord today. And God, you have done something in our lives. It has been uh, another great thing you've done in our lives that we can give you praise for. Lord, we thank you for the listening ears. Now prepare our hearts to hear what the Spirit has to say unto the church. Forgive us, Lord, of every sin we committed, both known and unknown, that you would hear our prayer. Lord, we love you now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to look at verse 3 and tag this sermon. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. I want to talk to you for a few minutes from this thought. The worship God deserves. The worship deserves. My brothers and my sisters, I often wonder what can we render unto yeah, God? What? what can we give God? The Bible reminds us, ladies and gentlemen, that God inhabits the praises of his people. That's a particular scripture sometimes trouble me or concerns me because I wonder why his people won't praise him. Come on, come on. I, I wonder, Sister Tish, why does it take some time a prayer, I mean a praise team and a choir and a music to get people to praise God? I wonder sometimes why is it that only time that we can praise God is that we feel like we need to get something from you? I wonder what, how many of us just praise God because it's the neighbor is praising God? How many of us praise God because we see somebody else praising God? But the thing that got me the most is to ask is that a worshiper is different from a praiser. Because a worshiper is a lifestyle. A praiser prays when something's going on. A worshiper don't have to say anything. They just know God good to them. A worshiper can praise God at home. A worshiper can praise God in the car. A worshiper can praise God at a job. A worshiper can sit right here in front of me, never open their mouth, and begin to worship God. Because a worshiper is, has a lifestyle of worship. That's why we got to be careful when we say have a praise and worship team because a praise and worship team got to know when to worship God and when to praise God. Right. We're going to get this in a minute because a praise, a, a, a praise that cannot praise God then worship God. Right. I just said something. It is difficult to praise God and then worship Him because the reason I'm to worship, we might have praise God is because I already worship Him in private. And God deserves our worship. God deserves us to worship him. And, and I just believe there's enough folks in the room that know God's been good to you. You say, I don't have to be bothered for nobody to make me worship God. Because I worship God because of who he is. Because really, truly, this is the praise. The word worship comes from worship to show what God is worth to you. And I just want to have five folk in the room that say, God is so much, he's worth so much to me. So why don't we give God? what he deserves. I, I, I'm concerned. I'm concerned, Sister Streets, because it's, we in an age now where it's individuals believe that it's not, it, they feel like it's something wrong to worship God. Yeah. And, and it bothers me because uh, uh, some people believe that the only way you worship God is through moving. Mm -hmm. oh, I, I, 
got about three, three, four in the room and five on Facebook. He said, I don't have to make one move to know I'm worshiping God. Because I can worship God in my bed. I can worship God. I can worship God because I show what he is worth to me. And there's some folk in the room that know God deserves your worship. Why go he deserve my worship? Because God worship gives me stuff I can't see. Worship makes provision when I don't have. Ooh, we worship, prepare, worship provides stuff that I haven't even, even asked for. See, the question, I can worship God and get stuff I even asked for. That's, that's, that's the worship. That's the worship. So, so let me let me get across this sermon because you're going to hear another uh, good one this afternoon and I don't want to hold you long. But I, I discovered, Reverend Cockett, it's impossible to walk through life without facing oppositions. Amen. Uh, while, we, while many, many, many foes uh, are human, we got to remember not all our enemies are people. Come on, people. I'm doing good all in. Because you hate on somebody who you don't like, that ain't your enemy. You got an attitude with somebody in this room, and that's not your enemy. Now they're talking about to me. You mad at your boo, and that's not your enemy. You mad at your mom and your dad, and that's not your enemy. You upset at your boss, that's not your enemy. You mad at your pastor, that's not, not your enemy. Your enemy is not always people. Sometimes your enemy might be the person in the mirror. I'm gonna preach it away, Sister Vita. I'm gonna preach it away. Always people. In fact, y'all get this. Life is a series of trials yes, sir. that we have to endure and overcome. Y'all yes, know my favorite saying, life will suck the life out of you. Yes, Sister Cynthia, sometimes ain't nobody bothering me, it's just life. Come on, come on. Sometimes saying that to me, it's just life. Yes, right. and I, and, 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 but we have to endure those things and overcome. For, for example, temptation is a constant threat. Yeah. I got nobody in my life to fight you over here. Temptation is a constant threat. Because temptation will always threaten you to do something you shouldn't do. Make you say stuff you shouldn't say. Make you want to do something. Come on, talk back to me. Anybody else have temptation threaten you every now and then? You try to walk away from it and keep begging you to come on back. You try to turn away from it. Anybody have some temptation? You just want to be so tempted to do it? It's a constant threat. There's circumstances beyond our control that oppress us. Yeah. That's stuff we can't handle. Yeah, yeah. Our own weakness can stand between us and happiness of success. Yes. Do you hear me? Yes. Your own weakness. Anybody done to you? Yes. Your own weakness keep you from being happy. Yeah, yeah. Physical limitations can hinder us yeah. and yeah. difficulty to our lives. Yeah. Mental yeah. and emotional foes such as depression, yeah. grief, guilt, Loneliness and anxiety are faced by many people. Yes, Every issue you have is not always a person. Amen. 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 However, unseen agents yes, of Satan yes, works tirelessly to destroy our lives. Amen. But through it all, God still deserves yes. our worship. No matter what I'm going through, no matter what I'm struggling with, no matter what emotional state I'm in, God still deserves my worship. Brother Davis, I don't care if you don't let me sing my song, God still deserves my worship. I don't care if you don't let me. My favorite sermon. God still deserves my worship. I don't have to teach Bible study. I don't have to lead the choir. I don't have to lead the ministry. I don't have to be a, a first one to sit down. I don't have to have a certain seat in the church. I don't have to sit where I sit every Sunday. God still deserves my worship because I can come in here to worship nobody but God. I got my five folks. See, I, they came for another reason, but I come to worship God. There's some other folks. Lord, I didn't come to see what you had to say. I come to see what God told you to tell me. Because I come to worship God, Golden. I know you said it, but Golden ain't about you. It's about God. I need somebody to help me. I didn't have come to hear the choir. Choir sounded good this morning. It ain't about the choir. Because you can sound like a talent brand and a tinkle symbol. But if you didn't come to worship God, you just sound a good noise. Is there anybody else who knows that I didn't come just to look at what you got on? I come to worship God today. He woke me up today. 
this Lord. I'm worshiping him. He's finally on my way. I'm worshiping him. I don't care what y'all do. Get mad at me if you want to. It ain't about you. I worship God. He still deserves your worship. Brother Matthew, I don't care what it is. And I know life has turned some that put some things that were lines this year. But what bothers me the most, Lady Gold, is you got folk that call themselves Christians. Come on. Preachers and teachers and lawyers and doctors and all these folks who say they got together and they can't worship God when they're going through. They leave the church. They don't show up. They got all kinds of excuses. How in the Sam heck can you not worship God when you're going through what you're going through? As a matter of fact, God pulled me closer to God because I'm going through what I'm going through. Bothered by folks. That's why you gotta be careful what folks say to you versus what they do. Yes, sir. Uh, so you know everybody got a good word. Yes. Name it, claim it. The Lord said, oh, I, 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 no. see, you can say it, but what happens when trouble comes? Can you live it? Yes. Uh, Moses, let, me, let, me, let me get to this. Um, Come on. In, in the Bible, if you got a good Bible, you probably saw this one. You've got a good Bible. You got a phone app, but it didn't know Kim. But in the Bible, there's a description in my Bible that states this song was originally a song written to the chief musician, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Absalom, of David, the servant of the Lord, who spoke unto the Lord the words of this song in the day that the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and foes and from Saul. Sister, 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 Watch this. The text, when we really read it at first glance, it talks about David being delivered from Saul. But in the description, it says that he delivered him from all his enemies and Saul. Y'all ain't listening, y'all ain't listening. Your enemy ain't your only enemy. The person you think you got an issue with ain't your only enemy. You got enemies. And God will deliver you from them all. You got enemies. Don't say that to you. You know they're your enemy. They just don't like you. You walk in the room. You mess up. The, you mess them up. You walk in the room. That is your enemy. You got folks smiling in your face talking about that. That's just your enemy. You got folks grinning at you all the time. They tell us about something different. That's just your enemy. I told y'all before. Be careful when about celebrate you openly because celebrate you in private. They all you. you gotta be careful. That could be an enemy in disguise. Uh, he was delivered from all of uh, his enemies and Saul. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, 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 Mr. Augustine, he sat down and he said, I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. He says, Psalm so I call upon the Lord, yeah. who is worthy to be praised, yeah. and I'm saved from my enemies. Right, get, get this, get this, get this left. Yes, During this time, mm -hmm. David was running from Saul. Mm -hmm. He was in constant danger of death. Look what he does next. Cut he sets down. He has been delivered from his enemies and Saul. Yeah. He lifts his voice in praise to the Lord. God, the God who delivered him and gave him victory. And we can learn something from David because David, after he is delivered, he sings a song of praise. Yeah. After he's delivered, he worships God. I told y'all earlier, I don't understand, folks, that God brings you through you stop coming to church. God picks you up and you stop showing up. You don't show up a Bible study. God, God gives you a new job and your job becomes your new God. God gives you a new position. Your new position becomes your new God. Your boo becomes your new God. God, y'all ain't talking back to me because I'm getting on somebody's toes. God does stuff for you and you stop giving God praise. They even have to be like begin to praise God. How can God give you a job and that job become your God? David praised God yeah. after he got delivered. Yeah. 
And got poor like was saved from his image. Watch this. You prayed for that job. Yeah. Come on, come on. God gives you the job. Yeah. Now the job gives you your way of serving God. Yeah. Something wrong with that. Yeah. You prayed for a boo. God gives you a boo. Yeah. And that boo now got you uh, giving God, you don't have time for God because like, your boo said, let's go to the golf course. Let's go play golf. Let's, let's do this. Let's do this. How in the world can you make can, can, take the blessing from the take the blessing from the blesser and forget the blesser? He deserves your worship at all times. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm gonna put this in there. It's a caution after just right now. The devil. Will sometimes give you stuff that looks Come like on, God. <laughs> somebody missed that. Somebody missed that. The devil will sometimes give you stuff that looks like God stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. But let, let, let me give you the answer. If it pulls you from God, it ain't God's. Yeah. I, I'm preaching on this. Uh, uh, man, I'm hit, 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 hit. See, you can't tell me God gave you a boyfriend or a girlfriend and now you gotta spend time with him. God gave you a job, now you can't come to church. God gave you a little money, now you gotta go, you gotta go. No! The devil gives you stuff, look like God's stuff. But the Bible says, try the spirit, by the spirit. The Bible says, whatever, every good and perfect gift comes from the Lord. Okay. Some folks just turned me off. I felt it. I felt it. I felt it. The numbers, look at that. This is dying down. Uh, here it is. When you serve God, He will give you victory over your enemies. Uh, and all of us are going to be like David. Because many of us have been hounded by our enemies. We've been in danger. And, uh, we was hounded by and almost died without Jesus Christ. But through His grace, He has saved us. So, so let me go one reason I worship God is because through his grace yes. he saved me. Yes, sir. Sister Dean, I worship God and he deserves my worship because his grace covered me when I couldn't come to myself. Let me help somebody with that. Grace is the ability
leave that alone, brother Brent. But something about Reese's get to me, y'all. Because my mama seems like it was amazing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> that God that brought the sin to this car. And grace will leave me on. Too many days your toys and snacks have already come, but y'all ain't see I ain't got no old folk in the room. But grace and brought me sick, and grace will leave me on. Remember, mother, there's something about grace. There's something about grace. When I, when I think about grace, I'm trying to move. But, but, but grace is in a word for me. Grace is a meaning to me. Grace is not just something I just say. Grace does something to me. Because I don't have to know about what grace definition is. I feel grace. I look at grace. I'm looking at grace. been saved through his grace. Yes. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I've been saved by his grace. Yes. I'm trying to leave this thing alone, y'all, but it's good. Tell ain't nothing I did save me. Yes. Me even walking down front and save me. Ooh, we. Me even on my mouth and save me. It was his grace that saved me because there's a lot of them open their mouth and still not saved. His grace, his grace, his grace. Yeah, his grace. Yeah, yeah. We've been saved. Yes, sir. And since we've been delivered, yeah. all of us oh. are to give God the worship. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Uh, 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 Ashley has put the time on me already. Yeah, she's going to do it. Uh, and I'm going to get through today, though. Here it is. There isn't enough time really to deal with this whole text, the whole song. Uh, 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 this song is the fourth largest book of the song. Yeah. But I want to spend a few just a few minutes on these three verses and tell you how we give God the worship He deserves. But the first thing I want you to see is this: uh, 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 pattern is that because. Uh, uh, you all do know these are song and written stanzas. So, so, so there, there are three great stanzas here that, that comprise the song. And, and I, I like to, I'd like to share this with you right now. Let's look at number one. Uh, the arrangements of the worship God deserves. All right. yeah, yeah, that's my first point. The, the arrangements of the worship God deserves. It's in your Bible. Verse one. I will love thee. Can I just stop right there quick? Brother Matthew, at the very beginning, the psalmist makes two profound declarations. First, he declares his love for the Lord. Amen. Then he says, my strength. That's his second declaration. Because he declares, Lady Golden, absolute dependence well, upon the Lord. He, he sees seems to be indicating that he will live his life with these three, uh, these two great things ever before him. And I wonder if there's two people in the room can go and do these two things and say, I'm going to live my life knowing he loved me and I depend on him. Yeah. That's just the hell. Because, because I know he loves me. And I love him. I know he's my strength. And I depend on him. I can't make another step without him. Examine these two things a little more just to see what we can see in this. Here it is. He, he says, the first thing he's talking about, he says, he, he says, and I like what he says, he says, I will love thee. I will. I will. My, my, my. So, Freddie, you hear that? He said, ain't no guess about this thing. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. He said, I'm going to love you. Yeah. I will. And I wonder how many else of your love, not for what he gives you. That's right. But you really love him. Yeah, come on. I mean, I mean it, it, come on, I if he don't do nothing else for me. He's already done enough. I said, Joy, I will love him. But, 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 the, but the word, the word translated love here, uh, don't, don't, stay with me, stay with me, because y'all say with me, is a word that means to find me. Well... It carries the idea of hugging. Uh -huh. yeah. you do. So, uh, I'm going to hug on him. Yes. Yeah. Come on, come on. Because he hugged 
living on me. Amen. <laughs> anybody ever felt it in the midnight hour just hugging? Ain't no, you know who the man ain't nobody been hugging on you. His love hugs on you. It, it, it carries the idea of hugging. I mean, that's not too rude. The psalmist is really saying, Sister Streets, that he is so filled with love for the Lord that he just want to slide up close to him. Yes, 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 sir. Yes, sir. And hold on to him. Let me know you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, just want to call him. He, he, he says, he, he, he says I just want to, I, I, I so really, I just want to hug yes, the Lord. Yes, yes, yes. In other words, his arrangements are, I just want to tell the Lord, I love you. Yes, yes. David, he, he, he relived his heart overflowing. I'm sorry, his heart was relieved. His heart overflowed with grateful affections for the Lord. Yeah. His, his profession, uh, our Lord is impulsive and emotional. It is a natural, unrestrained response for what God had done to him. In other words, David said, God is so good to me, I gotta respond. Amen. It's, it, 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 it's not a natural response. It's an unnatural response, and I can't resist it. Because God just loves me so much. I mean, I, he loves me so, I just want to pull up to him and let him know he loves me. So, God will get this in a minute. And I need somebody to get close to God and say, God, you love me so I want to love on you today. Because I can't restrain myself, you've been so good to me. I can't restrain myself, you killed me. I can't keep away from you, you love me so much. And I, because you love me, I gotta hold on to you. I just want to hug on you. I just want you to hug back on me. Because ain't nothing like when you got a new baby and the baby's got a hug on you. You get all cheery on the inside, or you meet that new person, that person hugs on you. That's the way he said, David said that. Lord, I just want to hug on you. I can't resist it. His heart overflowed with gratefulness. Yeah. But not only that, he, he also says, uh, Mr. Augustus said, there's some strength in this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nine times mm. in these first two verses, mm. David uses, y'all heard me, did you? The personal possessive pronoun, my. Mm -hmm. Count of Rose is nine times. Mm -hmm. Personal yes. possessive They say stuff like, that's my toy, my house, my room, my mom, my dad. That's my, my, my. That's the first thing the children learn. This is just a childish way of stating that they know what is theirs. See, you know, somebody missed that. That's their childish way of saying they know what is theirs. What David is doing, Brother Matthew, he is expressing simple childlike faith in his relationship with the Lord. Yeah. He's telling us that he is totally dependent upon the Lord for everything. Yeah. In other words, he says, I know he's mine. Yeah. Yeah. Every once of us, every, every ounce of strength came from the Lord. David's exuberant spirit is further seen in the description of all that the Lord represented to him. Get this. He could not find enough words to convey the fullness of his heart. Amen. In this psalm, he used a total of nine terms when you read the whole psalm. But the first time he used it, he says, the Lord has been David's strength in all his battles. God had, David had endured resistance and prevailed because of the Lord. Yes. And I like David make sure that he recognized that God is his strength. I need somebody to get this. Your pastor is not your strength. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I pray for you. <laughs> pray with you. Yeah. But your strength yeah. is in the Lord. Yes, sir. That's right. Yeah. Did it make something mess somebody up? Okay, let me get them on pray with you. But when you pray to God, uh -huh. You know what to say to God on your behalf. Yes, 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 yes. And watch this. I pray to the same God. I hope you pray to. Mm -hmm. My dad had 10 children, 13. Jesus. Yes, that's his name. <laughs> and all 13 called him dad. Yeah. Each one could ask dad what they wanted to. Yeah. Because that's the daddy. Yeah. 
Now, sometimes my brother will see me and say, Go after daddy this. Daddy's going to come back and ask for himself. Yeah. Sometimes God tells me, Ask God for stuff. God says, You need to ask him for yourself. For yourself. Yeah. God Almighty, somebody miss that sister Briggs. In other words, it's okay to ask somebody to pray for you. Yeah. But there's something you got to ask daddy for, for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. David, 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 here he, 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 we saw, we see it's a range of David's plan is to live, live for the Lord, to love the Lord, and to depend upon the Lord for everything he needs. And everything he does is like the second thing I want you guys is not only do we see the arrangements of the worship, we see the adoration of the worship. God Amen. Says. Yeah, we see, we, see, we see this adoration. There's adoration for a personal God. In other words, there's praise for a personal God. Uh, the usage of, of my in the text, it gains, again, it, 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 this is important. The, the important thing is in life is knowing that you are right with God. Yes, yes, yes. Be sure, you know, watch this, above everything else, that you are saved by grace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It isn't enough to be good or religious, right. to go to church, or to stop doing some things that you that you know wrong. Mm. It's okay to, to join the church or to be baptized. But you got to be saved. Yeah. There, there must be a time when you turn to Jesus Christ and in absolute faith for salvation. Nothing else will work Amen. Mm -hmm. for anyone. It must be salvation. Yeah. Romans 10, have you with that now? There, 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 there's also adoration for powerful God. In God and his relationship with him, David finds all the strength that he needs. To make it through life. No, notice, I'm gonna give you eight metaphors David used to describe God. Can I can I get those eight eight, eight, eight right, metaphors? Yeah. The first metaphor David gave, he says, God is our stability. David describes God as a rock. When everything else in the world is being tossed and twisted, God forever remains the same. He is always stable. Yes, you want scripture in Hebrews 13 and 8? He says that God is our safety. Amen. Yes, David says that God is like a fortress. Yes, sir. The, this surely has re reference to the lofty mountain cathedrals to which he fled when he was running from Saul. David reminds us that the Lord is a place of safety to which the saint can flee in times of adversity. Amen. So Daniel's my most good with that. Psalm 57 and 1. You know what David says that, that God is like that God is like a fortress. I can go somewhere and hide. Yeah. When I'm in trouble, he can, there's safety when I go to when I go and hide. Satan is like a royal lion. First Peter told you that. However, the saints has a place of safe refuge in the day of attack. God is our fortress. He's our place of perfect peace and safety. Yes, sir. Then the third, the third, third metaphor here, Ashley. God is our Savior. Yes. David refers to the Lord as his deliverer. Yes. The word refers to, to one who saves, one who rescues, one who delivers another from danger. This is the word that is filled with glory. David, uh, David, David reminds us that he is my Savior. He can deliver. He can rescue me. You see, not has the Lord saved us, we received him by faith. But he goes on to say, us, he, say he keeps us day by day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so he's our Savior. Yeah. And know that if, if you can never find another anthem to raise, raise the anthem to the glory of the Savior. Yeah. Yeah. His saving grace. Yeah. The, fourth, the fourth metaphor here is that God is our song. David refers to him as God. This is the word El. El. It refers to God as the Almighty God. This word pictures God as one who is over all things and as one who is in control of all things. Yes, the saints of God should surely rejoice in the knowledge that everything that happens is in God's plan and that He is in control of all things. Even though we can't make sense of it. Yeah, yeah. So somebody got to get that. 
There's some stuff we can't make sense of. But because we, we serve a sovereign God, he makes sense of the nonsense. God is still on the throne, but we can't make sense of what's going on now. We can't make sense of coronavirus, but God is still sovereign. We can make sense of Donald Trump, but God is still sovereign. We can make sense of, of all the stuff we go through, but God is still sovereign. You can make sense of what happened to you when you were a child, but God is still sovereign. You can make sense of you last week, but God is still sovereign. You didn't understand what happened and why it happened and why you had to go through it, but God knows. He knows everything that happens. And watch this. It's in God's plan. And that's good stuff right there. Uh, 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 God, God's house is something. Fifth, fifth, fifth metaphor here. God is our strength. Yes, he is. David tells us that God is all we need. Yes, he is. Children of God, we can we can we can ever rejoice in the fact that the Lord of heaven will be the strength of our lives. Yes, he will. None, none of us know what, what we will face and what we'll go through the years of our lives and then what we'll come up with, but, but we know that God is in heaven. And he will give us the strength we need to face our trials, our battles, and that he will help us along the way. I need to talk to about two people watching on Facebook. That whatever you're going through, you need to know that God has you on his heart. Amen. He knows your trials. Sister Jackie Dooley, he knows what you're going through. Sister Pauline, God knows what you're struggling with. He knows your life trials. I didn't mind just saying this on Facebook, folks. Somebody in the room know that you're going through something and don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. You wonder why you keep going through this. God knows your trials. And you ought to look at that same thing on your folks who look at you strange and say, you might not know, but God knows my trials. God knows what I'm going through. God knows my battles. And he will give me strength in the midst of my battle because God is our strength. Yes, yes, yes. God is our strength. I, I get excited about that because uh, I know that he will help me all along the way. Yes, he will. Yes, I just want to get that. Yes, he will. God will help you. All the way. Don't you give up. God is our strength. Here's the sixth metaphor. God is our shield. Yes, he is. David calls the Lord a buckler. Uh, Sister Joy, this simply means a shield. <gasps> this is what I'm getting right here. But that time, yes, when trouble comes, and it will come, yes, into your life and my life, sometimes, <laughs> God, I'm pull my hand <laughs> The Lord will allow those things to come and he will give us grace. Yes, yes. You missed that. Yes. When trouble comes, God allows it to come just so he can show me his grace. Yes. He allowed the stuff to happen so he can shield me and show me his grace. There are times, my brothers, when the Lord stepped between his children and their trials and act as a shield so that all the time when he makes stuff happen to me, Sometimes he shields stuff from happening to me. Because oh, the Lord sees the storm coming. Amen. Grandma, you say he won't put no well way down in bed. So sometimes the Lord sees it coming and he knows this might take me out. He says, oh, hold on, hold on. Not that one. Not that one. I don't know. I don't know when to shout. Y'all something. Y'all bother me. Y'all ain't all funny. Y'all ain't got me in this. Sometimes the stuff that God knows I He'll say, uh uh, I can't put that on him right now. I gotta shield that from him because I'm drawing him, and if I put that on him, it might take him out. So I gotta shield that from him, and you don't know what he shield from you. That's why God deserves your praise. You don't know what God shield from you last night. Somebody might have had your name in their mouth. Somebody might come in and God shield you. Somebody might try to run up your car, but God shield you. Your boss had you talk, they gonna fire you, but God shield you. Somebody Crazy, but God shield you. You won't be in church to there. Somebody plan to cuss you out, but God shield you. You don't know how God deserves how God deserves your worship. Because God don't show you what He shields from you. Yes, he did. I, I get excited over this. I get excited. I get so excited. Rose, because God doesn't show me 
with his shield for me. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. He's our yes. shield. Yes. I can't comprehend it. But God stepped in. Something awful was on the way. And God stepped in. I was getting dinner last night and I went on a, I think it was Bibbis or whatever it is. What's the Greek, Greek restaurant? Is that Bibbis or Yeah. And cops everywhere. God shield me. Because I was shooting one over there. I could have been in the midst of it. God didn't show me what happened. But he shielded me. And watch this. You could have been driving to church this morning. There's a drunk driver past you. God shielded you. And that's why God deserves our praise, our worship. Let, let me move on. Let me, let me move on because some folks still ain't that excited about knowing that God is shielded from some stuff. Here, here, here's, here's, here's my sense metaphor. God is our security. Yes, he is. Here it is. The Lord is called a horn of salvation. The horn is a symbol of strength and conquest. The, uh, when David calls God the horn of his salvation, he says, uh, uh, Creator, he said that the Lord is the strength of salvation. And that and that it is his salvation we have absolute security in. I believe that, that we can all rejoice in the knowledge that if we are in the Lord, then we are totally secure. Okay, somebody say, well, I don't believe that. We can check the first Peter chapter, first Peter chapter one, verse five. It is other that we are totally secure. He would never, he has never lost one of us yet. And he ain't gonna start now. We are, when you're saved, you are secure. You are, you are, listen, 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 listen. Don't y'all tell nobody. Be quiet. You are secure that you would not go to hell. You are totally secure. Not that your bars on your window, not your ADT system, not your uh, doors locked, but you're totally secure because God kept you. Not your life insurance, not your health insurance, you're totally secure because God secured you. Yes, sir. Point of salvation, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta know that this is. Uh, 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 it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a curved goat cord. It's like a whole overflow with fruit and ears of grain. It's, it's a similar overflow of abundance. So you look at this word of salvation. He says, I'm giving you more than what you can have. Yeah. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Uh, the, fourth, the fourth metaphor. metaphor and I'm going to get to my last one, actually. Okay. God <laughs> is our supply. Because somebody know God's supply for years. Because yes. yes. in this last metaphor, David says that the Lord is our high tower. Yes. 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 And, and what this refers to, uh, uh, it refers to the great towers that were built around the ancient city. From these towers, soldiers could look down on their attackers and send volleys of arrows down on their heads. These towers were fully stocked with ammunition and supplies. So when the soldiers ran to the high tower, they were above the battle. They were in, in a place of rest, refreshments, and ready supply. And God is the same for children. Get this, when the battle rages about us, we can run to him and be lifted above our battles and find the rest and refreshment we need to be able to fight the battle and win. So we run to God and run to the high tower where we are above our battles. No wonder that David praised the Lord. Yeah. However, we have the very same reasons that we should do it also. Yes, yeah. Here it is. We saw the arrangements of the worship. We saw the announcements. We saw the arrangements of the worship. Now look at the announcements of the worship God deserves. Mm -hmm. It's like that in verse 3, Matthew. In verse 3, David makes this announcement. He says, he promised to call on God. Amen. And to trust him. Amen. And him alone. Amen. For the victories of his life. Amen. David made an announcement. 
that you can say what you want about me. Yeah. But I promise, yeah. I'm going to call the name of the Lord. Yeah. And I want us to focus on this, I'm going to announce it today. Yeah. I'm going to call the name of the Lord. Yeah. He deserves my worship. The, the, the idea of communicating is that, that the psalmist is aware of the power and the praiseworthiness of God. And that he is pleading his life to walk in the awareness of the greatness and the power of God. He pledges, he announces, he prefers he, that he, I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight. David announces, hey y'all, I'm going to praise God. David announces, I'm going to worship God. David announces, I'm going to look to the hills where it's coming by help. David announces, I'm going to trust God. David announces, I'm going to believe in God. Now, sure, there's a time. That David was on the run. Yeah. And no doubt so that he thought he'd be captured and killed by Saul. Well. But God had proven greater than his enemy yeah. in every turn. Yeah. David knew that if God could do it yesterday, yes. then he'd be counted on to do it today yes. Yes. and tomorrow. Yes. And children of God, we must learn that God is all these things yeah. that David said he was. Oh, yeah. And we too should make the announcements in worship that God deserves our worship because he will protect you. He will provide for you. He will help you. We ought to make the announcement he will refresh you. And we are also make the announcement that he will be there for you. And I wonder if anybody in the room this morning can help me close my sermon when I tell you that God will take care of you. No matter what the problem is, God will be a blessing all around you. I heard the song where say, Jesus, be a fence all around me. I heard it say, he will protect me and keep me as I travel along the way. Is there anybody in the room today that says I want to give God the worship he deserves? Because he keeps on doing great things for me. I thank y'all for listening to my little Easter speech. But it's time for us to come down from here. But before I go can I tell you why he deserves my worship now? There's a saying that the children say nowadays, I even heard it in a movie. The saying says, you thank you all that. But can I help somebody close my sermon when I think about Jesus really being all that? I asked somebody, what does all that mean? They said they think they got it going on. They think they can do some things that can't nobody else do. I don't know who the young folk were talking about. But I can tell y'all today that he is all that. I'm not talking about just he is. I'm talking about Jesus is all that. He's all what, brother? He's all that you need. He's all that you have. He's all that you want. He's all that you got. Is there anybody in the room today that knows that he is all that? And for that, I will worship his name. He deserves my worship. He deserves my if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I would be able to worship him. And every now and then, I look back over my life and I thank God if it had not been for him. I thank God that he kept me when I couldn't keep myself. He deserves my worship. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Say yes. Say yes. Does he deserve your worship? Has he been good to you? Has he kept you when you could keep yourself? Can you help me one more time and tell the Lord you're all that? You're all that. You're everything I need. You're everything I got. You're all that. You keep on making a way out of nowhere. You keep on opening doors for me. You're all that. He is my early riser. He is my new day traveler. He is my late night company keeper. He's all, he's all that. He's everything, everything I need. I got to leave y'all, but I feel like giving God praise. I worship him. 
I'm not trying to leave that alone. I need somebody to help me call that name. That's it. I need somebody to help me call that name. I need somebody to help me call that name. Can you be like that and call that name? That give a sugar in the name. Give me half a second that name. Salvation comes through that name.
want is worship to follow your home. To reside in your own. He deserves our worship. And we're going to give him what he deserves. Sir, we honor the Spirit of Christ. We thank God for all of you.
258-7070. You say, well, Reverend, I just need somebody to pray with me today. That same number you can text. We'll pray with you before we leave. But if you have the armor safety, if you don't have a church home, we extend Christ to you today. Make your good choice today. We all have a question. I extend the invitation openly. It's not about joining a church. It's about being saved. But certainly we'd love to have you part of our family. If that's you, when you come. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, we bless your name. God, we have extended the invitation.
tell you what, you got to give me advice. If you got children, put that money back for their college funds. Right. 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 They don't need Jordan right now. They're more out of Put that money back for their college funds. Amen. Or toward a car when they get older. Amen. Or something. Y'all know I work for retail. Well, Folk in there buying vacuum, dressers, <laughs> desk, beer, wine, whiskey. Well, We've been so busy. And that's the last tip of shit you're probably going to get. Amen. I would not be a good pastor if I didn't try to tell you and ask you to be careful Amen. and mindful of the funds that you have received. Amen. I can tell you what to do with it. I can try to give you advice. If you're mad at me, I love you in spite of it. Amen. And if you want me to be quiet, I ain't. Amen. I just want you to be good stewards over that uh, money that you got. Amen. It's a blessing. Amen. Don't forget God. Amen. Don't forget God in your giving. And certainly don't forget to save where you can. Amen. All right, take those gifts. I spoke on it to make each envelope together. Raise your hand. In the, put your right hand, your app in your right hand. You can give to give a fire, cash out. God, we thank you now for the gift and giver. Thank you for the spirit of giving, the mind to give, the heart to give, the love to give. God, we thank you you've given to us. Then we give back to you. God, we thank you for the stimulus checks that we receive. Those who have received it. God, we ask you now to let us be good stewards over those. God, let us do what you command us to do. Then God, help us to understand saving yeah. and what we can save. But God, we pray that, that, that we've worked for it, that, that we've obtained, God, our first increase. You said that we should bring it to the storehouse on the first day of the week. God, this is the first day of the week. We pray that every individual has given, will bring their gift. They've sent their gift through the app so they do deliver those gifts to the church or they will give them while they're here. God, we know that you will take care of what needs to be taken care of, but we want to give because it's a commandment of yours. And we want to be able to be unto you. Now bless every gift, every giver. We pray for the ones that are angry over what I said. That God, you would soften their hearts and help them to know I have to be the voice of the crying in the wilderness. And, and spare not. Now God, help us. In Jesus' name we pray you take these gifts and, and make them and use them to glorify your kingdom. We ask all this in your name. Amen. Amen. Don't forget, you can bring your gift back today. Today, between now and 1 o'clock, there will be a trustee here to receive your gift. Uh, those of you that are watching us to cash out, I mean through the uh, internet, please cash out it, uh, give a fine, mail it, bring it by, however you decide to do that, we'll be glad to have a cash out, dollar sign, UBC614, it's on the screen, or give a fine, Unity Baptist Church of Columbus, feel free to do that, or you can uh, bring it by before 1 o'clock, and uh, we want you to be blessed in your giving, all right? God bless you, thank you for tuning in with us virtually, we love you, hope to see you at 5 o'clock, amen. Uh, and that you will be with us all week if possible. Take care. Missing you still. Don't forget Easter Sunday. We're trying to get together, so we're kind of playing yourself. We love you in Jesus' name. God bless you. All right, those are the sanctuary. We ask that you would stand. Follow